However, women in the Navy are not new. Dating back to World War I, Navy women have had a long history of proud service. Back in those days, they were known as yeomanettes, and they provided much valuable assistance in the war effort. Joy Hancock, whose Navy career would span four decades, was one of those who volunteered. Our Secretary of the Navy at that time was Josephus Daniels. Uh, he didn't cut the corners, but he found a very easy and practical way, generally, to do things. And uh, when we found that uh, civil service couldn't supply uh, the number of women they wanted in the clerical ratings, uh, he said, well, is there any reason why they shouldn't be sworn into the uh, Naval Reserve? And uh, his aides looked up the law, the legislation, and much to their surprise, they found that someone had neglected to write in the word male into the legislation. So Mr. Daniel said, all right, bring in the women. And that was it. We were accepted because we had certain skills to offer, mostly in the clerical field. And of course, they did expand to communications, cryptology, and, and uh, telephone operators. 1918, the war ends and women are mustered out. No thought is given to keeping them in service. Not until 20 years later does that thought reappear. In 1938, Hitler begins the inextricable march toward war. Some Navy leaders realize that women will be needed again when the conflagration occurs. Yet, there is opposition. Joy Hancock was a Navy civilian employee at the time. Well, those objections came from uh, various fields. The first that was, was a very positive objection came from the Congress itself. And uh, I think that was... Um, <clears throat> That was, had its basis in a feeling of chivalry, which the men had. I mean, the, I heard the expression so many times, oh, the women shouldn't be brought into the war. They should, women are to be protected, and so forth and so on. And some of our senior senators were, were guilty of those remarks. And uh, as far as the Navy was concerned, there, except for the very few older officers, uh, no one seemed to remember that women had already served and uh, the experiment had been carried out in World War I. Uh, very early in the program, there arose a need for some sort of a catchy thing. They we tried saying the women's reserve or the naval reserve or the women enroll for this, that, and the other. And finally, um, among the various suggestions that were given was one by Lieutenant Elizabeth Raynard. Uh, and she's given credit for this, for this um, um, slogan or acronym um, because it, it was, it smacked of the Navy in itself, waves. And she based that on the women accepted for volunteer emergency service. And that proved to be uh, a very catchy one for Republic relations purposes and also in recruiting. Calling all women calling all women join the wave in seattle washington newly trained waves navy auxiliaries take over the seattle air station we're proud of our first assignment and we're taking turns in manning the control tower we're only a few of the five thousand waves already signed up but the navy says we're doing such a good job that they want thirty thousand more already we've learned how to help instruct pilots with the link trainer Some of us carry last-minute field orders to the pilot. So come on, girls, and join the wave. And come they did, from all walks of life and all parts of the country. Secretaries, teachers, sales girls, students. From Louisiana, Texas, Nebraska, Connecticut, Oregon, Georgia. Whatever their background, they shared a common desire to help their country in time of need. Mildred Helen McAfee was appointed first director of the Waves. She had been the president of Wellesley College. In August 1942, she was sworn in by the Secretary of the Navy, Frank Knox. Practically overnight, two major training centers were established for women. One for officers at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. The other for enlisted Waves at Hunter College, New York City. This training facility was nicknamed the SS Hunter. By the end of the first year, 27,000 women were in Navy uniforms, and more were coming every day. 